from the twisted realm of science and the darkest pits of reason comes chilling tales of godlessness. Bear witness to the unfathomable terror that is... The Good Atheist! Hey, welcome to the goodatheist.net. My name is Jacob Forte. And I am Ryan Harkness. All right, I just came back from vacation, as you uh, guys were aware. I notified you in the last podcast. Took a little bit of downtime. Was that enjoyable for you? That was enjoyable. You I know, spent most was, of the time napping. It was great for me. You know why? Because uh, you weren't there. <laughs> <laughs> I feel the love, buddy. Mm. I feel the love. All right, well, today we have a, a kind of a theme show. Uh, yeah, it's about two different subjects, but the, generally the theme is kind of the same. And it has to do with, I guess, the increased sensibilities of the religious folks. <laughs> and uh, the two stories in particular, one of them is Kathy Griffith, uh, during her uh, Emmy Award speech, uh, you know, saying for Jesus to suck it. Uh, and we'll go into that. And the second one is India and their controversy regarding a... Um, a report they had written about the uh, land bridge that connects India to Sri Lanka, and uh, who's got to, who's up at arms about that. But uh, first off, let's uh, let's start with the Kathy Griffith thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, did you 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 don't really watch the Emmys, do you? No, I would rather stick uh, a knife in my eye. I I would too, except for I would rather that knife be red hot <laughs> yep. when it happens. That's I think there's nothing lamer than a bunch of celebrities patting themselves on the back and saying "Good job, yeah." Well, I did hear about the Kathy Griffith Griffith thing. <laughs> You'll get it, uh, Kathy this is, Griffith. This is gonna hurt me throughout the whole show. It really is. Just just but, call it. Kathy. Yeah, I heard about the whole Kathy thing. Yeah, but I didn't hear the whole follow up because the interesting thing was because she went on. Uh, we we're gonna play the audio clip, right? Yeah, we won't play it. Okay, well we're gonna do it right now. And we're we gonna can... do it right now. Well, there we go. Here we go. A lot of people come up here and they thank Jesus for this award. I want you to know that no one had less to do with this award than Jesus. <laughs> If it was up to him, Caesar Milan would be up here with that damn dog. <laughs> so all I can say is, suck it, Jesus. This award is my God now. All right, we're back now. Hopefully that worked. <laughs> <laughs> if I didn't get lazy with the editing. There we but go. yeah, I, I heard about her saying that, and I heard about there being a controversy about them not replaying it. But then it goes further than that. Oh, right? absolutely. What happened is that every time basically something uh, in, in, in that light happens, uh, they always get... Uh, uh, what's his name? Bill Do- uh, Bill Donahue, who is the uh, Catholic League, uh, you know, spokesperson. Yeah, uh, the president guy, I guess. And uh, he goes on. He's 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 really he's quite fat and loud. And he's just he goes on a rant about saying, oh, you know, this is hate speech. This is worse than racism. Uh, you know, she she has to immediately apologize, and you know, obviously goes into his tirade. And I guess a lot of people kind of felt the same way that he did. Seeing as how Bill seems to have some kind of pull among those that still think that disagreeing with the existence of Jesus is somehow paramount to, you know, killing babies or something. I don't know. You know what I think? I don't know. I think this is all the Muslims' fault. (laughs) It has to be. No, no, I'm serious. I'm serious here. Oh, really? Okay, I'm going to hear you out. I'm curious now. Hear me out. Okay, so remember those cartoons? Absolutely. Well, that that was where this comes from. You never used to hear about Christians getting all uppity about anything. And there, you know, there was, I mean, there's every single variety of, of Jesus insults. People dress as Jesus for Halloween. People dress as Jesus in porn movies. Jesus, you know, kills people in action movies. He does all sorts of stuff, you know? Yeah. And no one used to care until the Muslims got all uppity about those cartoons. And all of a sudden, the Christians were like, you know what? These guys, they know what they're doing. Because after that, you didn't hear about anybody doing that kind of shit anymore. Sorry. <laughs> but I'm just really passionate about this. No, you can bit. say the S word. I don't really mind. And I'm, I'm not, not going to censor myself that much. And I'm not going to blame uh, I'm not going to blame the Muslims. I'm just saying that the it, the the root of all of this kind of thing cuz the Muslims were saying as well, you know, this is racist. This is this is uh, this is hate and it's wrong. Now, of course, in in their case, you know, that was just the 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 cherry on top of the big mountain full of icing that was actual hate and racism towards them. But uh, that that's the difference between, in my opinion, 
what goes on with the Muslims and what goes on with the Christians. I think you might not be wrong about that, but here's actually an interesting side note to the entire cartoon thing. Uh, what a lot of people don't know is that a number of the cartoons that were being displayed, and some are actually the, the, the most... Um, heinous. Say, the most <laughs> heinous of the ones. Anyways, those ones were actually frauds that were created by extremists who wanted to incite... Uh, anger and violence among the uh, the Muslim population, they did, and it worked quite well. I mean, people were outraged, saying, you know, these these people should be killed, or and 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 all of a sudden you had the West saying, well, we need to defend freedom of speech, but practically nobody stood up for that. But really, what I think it's about is creating this campaign where a, as long as you're really loud, <laughs> mm. um, you're going to get your way. And and I think that seeing what happened when everybody was up at arms saying, well, you can't go and question people's faith. I think the, the you know Catholics in general and, or Christians are starting to see that if they push hard, uh, then they're not going to be forced to defend their faith. They're going to be like, well, you need to respect me because you're respecting all these other guys. Yeah. And really, the, the the real reason why people aren't posting up cartoons of, you know, the Prophet Muhammad anymore is they're scared to death. It's not because there's suddenly this newfound appreciation or lack of appreciation for freedom of speech. It has more to do with the fact that people are just scared and in that kind of sense, I can see where the Catholic thing is trying to put their own pressure. They're putting, you know, uh, not a f kind of a, a physical threat, but more like, uh, I guess, bad press kind of. Well, threat. it goes beyond that because they've cut her, like they've cut her speech from the show. They 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 cut. There was a replay, and I didn't even know they replayed the Emmys. I'm like, ugh. No, well, you know what? They they cut. They didn't cut just her out. They also cut out um, Sally Field. Uh, because she said the word goddamn or like there'd be no goddamn war or something like that. And they, and they censored that too. Wow. I mean, I think, I believe, well, it's, this is Fox, right? It's displayed on Fox. So Fox doesn't yeah, want to... Um, the Emmys are on CBS, aren't they? I, I think this year is on Fox. I'm not exactly oh, well, that might, that might have something to do with it. Anyways, the, the whole point is the fact that I mean, they're they're going they're going to censor stuff like that now because everyone's afraid of anyone having a political opinion An or a religious another, opinion. Another nipple gate. They're afraid of of another situation where something happens and at the end of the year they get fined a billion dollars by the uh, by the, the 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 whoever is the Nazi regime owning the F running. well the FCC is yeah. what you mean. Well, yeah. you know what? I don't even mind a network censoring their own content. It's really up to them to decide, and I don't care because this stuff's going to get leaked out anyways. Mm. What concerns me most is not the fact that it was censored. What concerns me most is the fact that everyone blew this out of proportion. You have to remember, first of all, Kathy Griffith is a comedian. I don't necessarily always laugh at the jokes that she makes, but I can appreciate the fact that as a comedian, you're going to go for the hardcore stuff. You're going to hit below the belt. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, there's no hold bars. And I think that's the kind of unique things about comedians. They can say the things that we think, yeah. but we don't dare say. And that's what makes us laugh. Well, what's hilarious about the whole thing is you listen to the clip, and the clip was hilarious. There's no denying that... that it was a good uh, speech. And, and you know what? I, I mean, do I think that Kathy Griffith... Griffith hates God or hates Jesus in reality? No, she's just making a joke. Uh, but the the best thing was, we listened when we were looking for the sound clip, we heard uh, uh, a sound clip of a news reporter oh, yeah. reading back the joke and and I'm going to I'm going to get uh, get big here. We're going to put that in. We're going to put that in. We're going to put that in right now because wow. it's just so hilarious. Okay, ready? Let's put it in now. These days, it seems no award show can escape controversy, and in this case, it's the Creative Arts Emmy and comedian Kathy Griffin. She picked up the award for Best Reality Show last weekend, but when the show airs on Saturday, her acceptance speech is going to be censored. In her speech, Griffin said, quote, a lot of people come up here and thank Jesus for this award. I want you to know that no one had less to do with this award than Jesus. Well, according to the TV Academy and the E! Channel, Griffin's remarks will be shown in a, quote, abbreviated version. All right, hopefully that worked too. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, it, she just, I mean, it just goes to show you when you suck the humor out of something and just present it It can sound straight. really offensive, <laughs> can it? Be like, quote, Kathy Griffith, she said that, suck it, Jesus. <laughs> I, I hate <laughs> No her. one had less to do with this award than him. <laughs> and you're just like, wow, you know, I, I'm glad you're not a comedian because uh, you would make everything sound really, really offensive. <laughs> Again, uh, but you know, going back to the whole sort of root of the subject, I mean, there's this the general trend now seems to be at least from deeply religious folks is that they are they're putting up you know the battle trenches of saying we are sick and tired of our faiths being questioned, mocked. Uh, mocked. 
now we're going to have to go on the fence of saying, well, people have to respect our, our, our beliefs. They have no choice about this. They need to apologize anytime anyone says something, you know, mildly offensive. And again, my thought has always been this. What are you so afraid of? I mean, if you really have faith, if you really believe, I mean, at the end of the day, do you, do you really care what other people think? I mean, you're, you're going to mock them from heaven, presumably. Well... And, they, and why are you so insecure about your own faith that you're, every person that questions it all of a sudden becomes the largest and biggest issue you've ever had to deal with in your life? Here's the deal. Do you want... Uh, if you're a religious person, do you want your religion to be the next uh, Harry Krishna? You know, those guys were basically laughed into, like, B-level... Into or obl- C- almost into, oblivion? Yeah, not just oblivion, but they're, you know, also they are a bunch of tambourine-playing guys standing outside the airport. You know, that's <laughs> that's that's what Harry Krishna is now, and it's a shame because, you know, as far as religions go, it's pretty stupid, but... <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, it's got you know, it's, it's no, le- it's no it's less, no it's no less humorous than say some of the other claims. Well, I, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, but, but I mean, in in general, it's like that's what happens. There is a PR battle going on in the war, uh, in the world, and and you look at people like Scientologists who are all about defending, vigorously their defending what people say about about their things, and they've got a pretty good handle on it. I mean, it, for you and I, we see it and we understand it, but I mean, when you're looking at all the people who aren't exposed to what these Scientologists do and don't know anything about it, these these are these are the kind of people that fall into Scientology, and next thing they know, they're they've got no money, they've got no family, and they're completely brainwashed. Well, it's a, it's a it's a very well crafted image that each religion tries to portray, uh, and. I mean, they do their best. Like you, know, you you'll have um, you'll have Islam that claims, or you know, Islam is a religion of peace, and you know they'll they'll obviously try to sell it as that. Yeah, um, Christianity is very much the same. It's like it's all about love. Now, evidently, both of these Just religions, keep it in histori- your pants. both of these stories, uh, not stories, but both of these religions, historical past seems to suggest that that's not true. And the fact that people actually believe that now does demonstrate the fact that there is there there has been such a powerful campaign. And I guess they they are very careful about where that uh, campaign can lead. Although I think that personally, um, any if you want to lose a case, you have to overstate it. Mm. And and these kinds of guys, like the Catholic League, is great at making you know Catholics uh, and Christians in general look so foolish from looking at like this kind of speech. And and for a white uh, male Catholic male to say that a rich white. rich white Catholic male to say that it's worse than racism demonstrates the fact that this man has absolutely no idea what racism is. All right, perhaps if he had oh I don't know lived in the South and suddenly become black, mm-hmm. uh, perhaps then he could really say yes this is worse than racism. But honestly, a joke from Kathy Griffith who is a self proclaimed D list celebrity she revels in the fact that she's completely despised by absolutely everyone and that's her shtick to say that this is worse than racism buddy (laughs) honestly shut your mouth and do what you do best which is uh you know nothing (laughs) i I definitely agree that it was not the right battle to pick but i mean i the my my thought on it is most likely these guys have you know a certain amount of press releases and a certain amount of appearance that uh, that they decide at their stupid meetings they're gonna do so you know they 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 don't pick and choose they've just like okay well we haven't put anything out for a month here's an opportunity and I mean it's working we're talking about it other people have talked about it, it was on the front of CNN for half a millisecond and it was you know it it, it made the rounds I know but just because like the, the old adage of any publicity is good publicity is not true hmm. and you know just ask OJ Simpson is he making more money now that he's uh, famous and notorious no uh, at at one point, publicity can be bad. I mean, you. This is not necessarily the kind of thing you want to display because well, as you, as you put yourself in the spotlight, the cracks become more obvious. Yeah, but at the same time, you can say that the battle was wrong, but the message was still true. the The message that they want to put out there that you have to stop mocking us and we aren't going to take it lying down anymore is 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 was the point of all this. They just got to wrap it up. In something that that you know, uh, you know, Entertainment Tonight would be willing to cover, so we can get his fat butt, uh, face on television. <laughs> so I mean, it, he they trailer hitched this this argument, and they attached their me- uh, their message to it. So which was smart, uh, in a general way, because as I said, it worked. We're talking about it, but you're saying it probably did 
worse than than well, good? Y- you know what? Y- here's here's the thing, and, the, and and we're going to use this as a segue to talk about the second thing, uh, which is uh, the Indian land bridge to S- Sri Lanka. Now, if you're not aware of of this, essentially what happened is that there was a report that was uh, made by um, the government in India, basically outlining plans to get rid of this land bridge in order to be able to increase trade not get rid of it but they were going to build they were going to they were going to cut into it okay well like yeah a, sure. build like a, a passing for boats okay fine they were going to cut right into it um now part of the report mentioned the fact that obviously some people were really quite upset and the reason they were upset is because there is this legend that this uh you know king uh by the name of king rama i believe he um his wife got kidnapped and he created a land bridge with his monkey army to fight uh, the armies of darkness. And, uh, yeah, and to, to do that would upset this monkey army and, uh, you know, completely and utterly trash this, ov- the, the, this seemingly mythological and miraculous land bridge. So when they wrote the fact, you know, like, obviously they, they, they wrote that, and they wrote, well, we need to make decisions based on sound scientific policy and not on mythology. And that is what caused a huge degree of controversy. No, no, here's, here's the controversy, because you're completely twisting this into your own pro-atheist agenda. Okay, Again, well, let's, as let's you, hear, as you let's always hear. do, and this is why I'm here to beat you down on it, is the big problem with it was... No, I mean, obviously, people were upset that they were planning on 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 messing with the land bridge because it's a religious. Uh, it, it's considered a whole. It's considered holy ground. Now, above and beyond that, the government report didn't just say, "Well, we should still do it." They it, it literally said, "There is no science. There is no evidence whatsoever that any of this ever happened, and we think it's foolish." And that's in a government report. So no, they didn't say foolish. They said that it's based on mythology. Yeah, it's ba- it, it's not real and it doesn't exist. So basically, and you say this is a legend, and you say uh, you know it's ridiculous. But I mean, it, it's no more legend and no more ridiculous than anything you read in the Bible. So I mean, you got to take this. Uh, you know, everything involves monkeys over in India. So you got to take this out of its well. You, unusual... Obviously, you can put it in its context. And you're right. You're right. There's there's obviously this Western bias of saying well. You know, the idea of monkeys is ridiculous. <laughs> Building a land bridge. Well, and I, I won't mean, deny I mean, that. I won't deny that. We had but that's the point. whole point, you see? Because we can put it in that con- context. When I live in a Western society, and I can't because somehow we've accepted the foolish notion that, you know, every animal could fit, every two uh, of every animal could fit on a freaking boat, and somehow this is an acceptable idea, and to even question that just seems to put in jeopardy the authenticity of a of, of the dusty tome that is the Bible. No, I am taking this opportunity just to show how foolish that is to make my point about actually what uh, Bill Donahue was doing, which is was you know he he exposes not only the ridiculousness of his own you know. Um, his own objections, but even of his own mythology, even of his own religion, of saying, we can't stand this, this is racism, this is the most horrible thing anyone ever said. And on, 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 on the Indian side, a report saying essentially that, you know, we cannot make policies based on these, you know, mythological and uh, improvable ideas and we need to have sound scientific basis. And the population going, you know, crazy over this. Because well, remember, the population... You got to look at the reason that the population went crazy, and it was because basically they they felt that the that the government report didn't respect their their religious beliefs, and and that's what it comes down to is the fact that they were saying we're going to do this because as far as we're concerned, uh, this this whole religious idea of this being holy doesn't matter to us, and that's what it comes down to is they say. We don't care. We're going to do it because, as far as we're concerned, science says this never no, it, it, exists. No, the report did, didn't didn't suddenly say that. Okay, this is going to be built right now. The report just said that, you know, we can't start making policy decisions based on mythology. Now, obviously, someone's going to read into it as saying, "Well, you're not going to." It's it's not even a matter of saying, "Well, you're not going to respect." I think there's a bunch people's of angry, objections to angry it. Indians over there who are doing just that. Well, they, 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 you know, they block the streets, they had blockades, they're like, you know, you must absolutely, everybody who many, wrote that has to quit, uh, you know, like, they want to, you know, castrate these uh, government employees, saying, like, how dare you, um, you, you are, you are obliged to respect our religious belief, and that's the point here, because in the report, no one was obliged to have to make that, you know, um, you know, to, to, to placate the mythological needs of the population. Nowhere is it written anywhere that thy government should necessarily, uh, you know, 
humor your religious beliefs. No, if it really is something that, say, is even necessary, that they have to build it because if they don't, something would happen. I'm not saying that's the case. Mm. But if that was the case, if somebody stood up and said, well, we can't do that, why not? Because it would anger the monkey gods. Honestly, sit the hell down. You are out of the conversation because now you are you are standing in an irrational, completely and utterly delusional state of mind. And this is this is the problem with the population here that is so a- up at arms that their own government would actually say, "No, you know what? This is just mythology. Can we not accept this?" But how different is that compared to all of the incidences going on in the Middle East between Israel and everybody else? Like, how is that different from, say, Zionism, for instance? No, not, not, not Zionism, or, but just the or, idea or, or, uh, of fighting over, you know, you can't have, like, the whole the whole root of the problem is the idea of holy ground in Palestine, right? Or in Jerusalem, whatever, whichever one. Yeah, it's it's in Palestine. Jer- yeah, so, I mean, to me, I, I, see, I see the same kind of connections. You see people who are up in arms because their ideas aren't being respected. Well, this is exactly what I'm saying, and this is exactly what the problem is. Because we're all fighting over pieces of land or interpretations of storytelling. And, you know, what? most people who read, uh, what was it called, the Ramayana or some? Uh, I don't, I have written that. The Ramayana, yes. Anyone who reads that understands that it's just poetry. It's allegorical. But uh, evidently there is always a certain segment of the population that refuses to believe that anyone would ever write anything just for story's sake, just to have a moral homily, this is apparently unbelievable. No, no, no. Forget the morality of this story. Instead, what's interesting is that this is historical fact, and that we need to actually create policies based on these mythologies. This is what, it doesn't offend me. It saddens me. The fact that the, you know, such a huge percentage of the Indian population just wanted to burn in effigy their their leaders for such blasphemy is is, you know, annoys me. This is the same country that has the bomb, okay? This is not like some, you know, run-of-the-mill uh, third-world country that uh, doesn't matter. Their, their, their effect, their influence, who they elect, what they think has a direct influence on everybody else. Because if they elect people that say, if you touch the land bridge, we're going to nuke you. I mean, literally, this, this it's not within, outside the realm of possibility that you could elect such individuals. And this fact may even justify the elections of such hardliners because the population is up at arms about this. <laughs> this is what annoys me. You seem pretty worked up. I'm worked up whenever an army of monkeys is used as a justification for, uh, you know, knocking down a report that, that in, in my mind, is, is really quite accurate. It's accurate in saying, well, we cannot continue to make policy decisions, particularly about this or even anything else, based on mythology. And sure, there are people that will be offended, and you can try to work with that. You know, like, obviously, uh, there there has to be some effort to try to get your population to understand, saying, like, listen, I know that you guys feel bad about this, but this is something that's good for all of us. Uh, and, you know, not necessarily beat them down, but they are not obliged to respect the delusions of individuals. They are not under that ob- obligation. I don't think anyone ever should be. We criticize any belief other than religion with equal fervor, but for some reason, the most irrational attitudes about that every human beings have, which is really their religious attitudes, are somehow out of uh, you know out of out of touch or like beyond criticism. I'm sorry, no, we we, we can't do that anymore. Well, I'm gonna agree, I'm gonna agree that you know you can't not you know uh, build this thing on account of, of of these beliefs, but there are definitely good ways and bad ways to go about it, and the people that. Uh, the people that did this and messed it up, it's a pretty big screw-up. And you, there's there's definitely better ways to approach it. As opposed to saying, you know, uh, as I said again, the, the, the key thing that, that everybody read out of it was the, the government was saying, we don't believe this and, and this doesn't matter to us. And what they should have really pointed was, was basically saying, this is this is the effects if we don't do, the, if we don't go ahead with this plan and this is the effects if uh, and this is what we could have if we do you know what in, in the same context like when you're saying well they should have been more careful um, you have to understand that um, a, a large part of India which is still you know very rural mm. um, is extremely superstitious I mean there are still you know people that get burned alive for being witches oh yeah and this, this, ha- this happens all the time um, a large percentage of the population is either very poorly educated or not educated at all. And their class system makes it so that there are certain individuals that will never be educated. They are just not allowed to. Um, that's a frightening thought. It's, it's, you, you can't try to, so, to, to reason with individuals that 
don't even know the rules of debate or the rules of reason. They they yeah. will have their own particular beliefs, and no matter what you say, no matter what way you spin it, someone else is going to have that counterspin. And in India, when you remember that Richard Gere sort of thing, where he, you know, he um, the lewd hug that he gave uh, that actress to try to encourage people to use condoms. Yeah. I mean, there were riots and and and, I like and how people, people got die. hurt. Yeah, people, people die. die. People die all the time whenever they have riots. I don't know. Very emotional, I suppose. There's just a lot of people. I guess it's just bound to happen. Someone gets crushed. I don't know. But that's exactly my point. Like, they can't allow themselves to be riled up every time somebody says, well, you know what? Maybe it's time for us to grow up. Be like, how dare you? No, he's a witch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're, you're mixing 21st century technology with, you know, 14th century attitudes. Uh, of course there's going to be instances like this. This is just nutty. Mm. No, I agree. I agree it's ridiculous. But, I, I mean, as I said, there are... There, there's the Kathy Griffith, Griffith way, God, way of of of, <laughs> of, of putting the idea out there, mm. and then there is the uh, the the Indian government way of putting it out there, which is just we're doing it, we're keeping it hush hush, and we're killing anybody that uh, that that tries to mount a resistance against it. What do you mean they're gonna kill anybody? They haven't killed anybody. I don't know. That's what they should do. Oh, this is what yeah, they yeah, should yeah, do. Yeah, oh, I, okay. I, I, right. My opinion is they basically kill a third of their population. They basically uh, like no one has anything left to do with this land land uh, structure, bridge, bridge than, than, than a bunch than, of monkeys, a, a bunch of monkey monkeys. army. All right, <laughs> which is basically what they did. And what they should have done is they should have just went ahead with it quietly and murdered anybody that put up resistance. <laughs> which is which is really which is, the uh, way things go in the Middle East, anyways. I mean, just ask Syria. That's how they roll. Yeah, well, all the uh, all the uh, assassinations are just basically this guy's in the way. Let's yeah. just get rid of him. You don't Syria, release a report Syria, about who needs to go. Syria burned an entire city to the ground because there were just a couple too many people in there they didn't like. <laughs> yeah, that's a little hardcore. We don't want to. We don't want to encourage that kind of behavior. But no? hey, if there's no God, there's more, more no morality. And if there's no morality, then that's okay, right? Right, that is often, I guess. I, I thought that was the principle of atheism. That's why I'm on the show. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next week we'll be having a different uh, guest host there, uh, one that isn't as scary. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess we'll we'll we'll, we'll cut it a little bit short today and uh, and just deal with those two subjects. There is one th- one last thing I guess I want to say about it, and that's essentially uh, kind of this idea that I that I want people to really realize that it's not necessary to really uh, be overly aggressive towards people's beliefs. I don't I don't actually believe in that. There, there's no reason to create animosity where no animosity is is needed. And and definitely in the Indian situation, I don't disagree with Ryan that the fact that perhaps a little bit more kuth uh, should have been uh, you know, uh, excise but uh, exercise. But here's the thing though, at the end of the day, individuals should be allowed to be uh offended. And the very fact that other people want to stop that from happening, want to stop you from telling someone that you really don't believe in what they believe or that you find Jesus Christ offensive uh, or it, it really doesn't matter for me that the defense is not only freedom of speech but the marketplace of ideas and as soon as you suddenly say this individual who says this is a is a filthy racist shouldn't be allowed to say what they say well you're not allowing those ideas to really grow and and compete against other ideas in that marketplace and if you really believe that your idea is better then why should you be afraid I call you out. Anyone who actually believes and that, and that have faith and that think their faith is so much more powerful than anything else, I call you out and dare you to stop being such a wuss and to stop being worried about getting offended because, honestly, it doesn't sound to me like you're really sh- too sure, 100% sure about your own beliefs, okay? That's just my my feeling. Any last thoughts? Uh, no, good point. You summed up everything that I uh, everything that I believe in a nice package. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, join us again next week. Uh, and uh, I actually wanted to be specific. I'm I'm, I'm making a promise about what we're, we're going to talk about next week. Mm-hmm. We are actually going to talk about Scientology. Next Ooh, week we're going to talk about Scientology. Aren't you afraid? <laughs> I am afraid. I've I think the podcast has reached a particular size that now I may be I may get sued if I talk. Uh, yeah, now, now tell crap me, Jacob, are are we one of the biggest? Uh, atheist podcast out there? Well, I'll tell you what, we are actually the biggest atheist podcast on uh, iTunes, and I want to send a thank you out there to all of you uh, fans who actually made this possible. It's it's amazing. I, I still can't get over the fact that we are just, you know, always getting more and more popular. It just, it blows my mind, and I just wanted to say uh, thanks out there for everybody that listens. It's uh, pretty cool. You know what, uh, you know what this proves? 
Mm, no. Mac users are atheists. <laughs> Anyone who has iTunes or an, an iPod hates God. Yep. That's basically it. Absolutely. Their, their god is... is uh, <laughs> their is, god is, is music and well and, and Steve design. John. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All right. Well, thanks, everybody, for listening, and uh, we'll see you all next week. <laughs>